So in this video, I'm going to share six important factors for ranking your affiliate marketing blog on Google, getting the best SEO to make sure that you are showing up at the top of Google search results. This is something that is absolutely crucial for if you are building an affiliate marketing blog, you need to make sure that you are following all these steps. There's going to be a lot of really important uh, pointers in here that I think are going to help you out quite a bit. All right, so let's talk about these six different factors. Uh, the first one here is making sure that you focus on quality over quantity in 2024 with websites. Look, I had to put this point first because I think a lot of people are missing it where uh, they think that they can just, you know, have ChatGPT write all of their articles and thinking that they are going to rank. Look, when ChatGPT came out in 2022, there's this massive influx of bloggers who used it entirely to write their articles for them. And suddenly we saw thousands and probably millions of new articles getting pumped out on all these blogs that were written by ChatGPT. And while this can seem like a great idea, Idea, you want to be careful with it because what ends up happening is that Google can tell that this is written by AI um, and it kind of feels a little bit bland. And so uh, when they notice that AI is writing these articles, uh, it tends to not rank it as well uh, on Google search. So just be careful with that. I still think in today's day and age that um, you know you can use something like ChatGPT to help write articles, but don't lean on it too heavily to write all of your articles for you. Uh, typically what we do for our writers is we tell them, look, you can use it to like create ideas or create an outline for an article, but make sure that you are still modifying it and using your own words because that's one of the best ways to rank is to really write as a real person. Um, it, it's tough to actually uh, beat something like that. Step number two and factor number two here for uh, making sure that your blog is ranking on Google in those top search results is to find keywords. This is another big mistake that I see people making with, especially with affiliate marketing blogs when they start them, is that they try to compete for extremely competitive keywords like for example if you have a credit card blog and they try to um, you know make an article of like top five credit cards for 2024 uh, now the problem here for ranking on google is that if you have a new website it's going to be very difficult it's almost impossible to rank on the top page of google with a brand new website for an extremely competitive term and the truth is that these top terms like top credit cards or best credit cards those are worth millions of dollars to rank number one on google that's how much money those uh, affiliate blogs pull in and so because of that super competitive, you're not going to rank for it. Okay. And so what you should do instead, especially with a newer affiliate marketing blog is to focus on what we call long tail keywords. So for example, instead of best credit cards for 2024, maybe something way more specific, like best credit cards for Korean business owners. I just made that up there, but you can see how like the more specific you go, uh, the higher chance that you will be able to rank for those terms on Google. So one of the best ways to find these long tail keywords is to literally just go onto Google and start typing things in and see what pops up. And I really think that just using these keywords that Google suggests is one of the best ways to find them, okay? Um, there are other services, like you can use something like SEMrush to help find you uh, new keywords to target. But the reason why we like these Google suggestions is because this is what's kind of trending now. This is what people are searching for now. It's super up to date. Um, and sometimes you don't need to reinvent the wheel for SEO. You can just see what comes up after you type in, you know, certain words, right? Credit cards for students without a social security number or credit cards for students um, under 18, right? These are terms that still are probably going to be pretty difficult to rank for, but it's going to be easier than trying to rank for just like overall best credit cards. And I still remember to this day, uh, a blogger, when I first got started years and years ago, he said, uh, riches are in the niches. And so I think that's pretty true for something like blogging and SEO. So just using those Google autocomplete features is going to help you find some new articles to write for your blog. Now let's talk about the third factor. This is one that a lot of people look over for search engine optimization. And that is when you have a slow site speed on your website. I've seen this happen all too many times where, you know, you might have the best article in the world. You might have all kinds of backlinks and, you know, everything is set up properly, but then your website is loading so slow that uh, it tells Google, you know, look, like if this takes five seconds to load, they're not going to show this to any readers and they're not going to rank it very high in Google search. So this is something that you absolutely need to make sure you have a fast load speed on your website because Google really cares about that in 2024. Now, one of the fastest website uh, hosting services 
services is something like Hostinger. So uh, they're sponsoring a portion of this video. I'll leave a link to them down below. But if you have a WordPress website and maybe it's not loading very fast or you're just not sure, I suggest switching over to something like Hostinger. Um, or if you haven't started a blog yet, start it on Hostinger. If you want to claim this deal and move over to Hostinger or create a website on Hostinger, then you can just go to hostinger.com slash Santrell. Let me just show you how easy it is to set up a website using Hostinger. Um, so if you go to that and you just click on claim deal, and then we can choose between the premium, the business or the cloud startup plan. Uh, for this you know, example here, I'm just gonna go for the business plan. Obviously the cloud startup plan has some really incredible features and I would recommend that if your budget allows for it. Um, but even with the business plan, you get so many different options here um, that you can look over before signing up. Um, but let me go ahead, add this to cart and show you how easy it is to build a site here. So I'm gonna go for the 48 month plan. You know, this is gonna be the best bang for my buck here in terms of pricing, $3.69 per month. Sometimes these prices can fluctuate, so I don't know what it will be when you're watching this video, um, but you can go ahead and check that out. So I'm gonna go for that four year plan, that 48 month plan, because that's going to you know lock me in at the best deal possible. Okay, so now let's redirect me to the control panel where I uh, will have the ability to start making this site. Um, and you're gonna see that, you know, you can honestly do this very quickly. So I recommend doing this, you know, as soon as you finish watching this video. Okay, so uh, if you're creating a new site, you can just say that you are making a new site for yourself. Um, or if you already have a website and you're looking to migrate it over to Hostinger, then you would click on this option. So let me just just say that maybe I'm, you know, I already have a site somewhere and I want to move over to Hostinger. I can click on that. It's a blog. And then uh, I built it myself. You can see how easy it is to like go through their process here. They really help you out. And so you can either create a new website or migrate your site. So if you already have a website, you can click on migrate and then, you know, transfer or upload your site. And so you would just enter in your WordPress info and they would help you to migrate your site to Hostinger. Now, if uh, you don't fit into that category and you're just creating a new website, you can also do that right here. So create a new website. All right, and so now we have two different options. We can either use WordPress with AI or the Hostinger Builder with AI. Now, if you're really going for the best SEO, I do recommend using WordPress with AI. It's a little bit more of a learning curve, but I think it's worth it if you really want to uh, have your site perform best. The Hostinger Builder is also amazing, but for this, I'm just gonna select uh, WordPress with AI. Now, you're going to want to set up a WordPress account, but for this, I'm just gonna click on skip so that I can show you how to get this started. Then we can either use an existing domain or buy a domain. So for this one, I'm going to use an existing domain that I already have. Let's say it's going to be centralmediaphilly.com. I'm just going to use one of our other companies and then I can uh, click continue here. Now what we can do is let's look at our website and we can also look at the control panel here, uh, which is how you're going to basically manage your site. So right here we have um, all these different uh, features and capabilities within Hostinger to build build our uh, website. And so uh, what we can do is we can uh, go down to website and click on WordPress and we can start to build our site on that platform on WordPress. Okay. Uh, you're going to have to install WordPress and then you can set up your site that way. We do have a full Hostinger WordPress tutorial that you can go and check out. I'll leave a link to that down below in the description. And Hostinger also has a number of things you can look at for performance to look at your page speed, for example, which is going to be very crucial for SEO. So they have lots of SEO tools available as well. So thanks Hostinger for sponsoring this portion of the video. Don't forget to check out that link down below um, so you can create your site on Hostinger. Uh, let's continue on with the rest of the video. Okay, factor number four here is going to be backlinks. Look, backlinks, this is still very important for ranking on Google. So basically what this means is that Google, when they see a new website um, or really any website, what they do is it's almost like reference checking to see if other websites view your website as credible. Um, and this is one of the main factors that Google still uses today to figure out uh, if they should have your website ranking high in search or if they should kind of bury it and put it on like page 50 uh, for Google search. So basically what backlinks are is that whenever a reputable website, something with the high, what we call domain authority, uh, links to your website, maybe links to one of your blog articles or to your site as a whole, uh, what that does is it tells Google that, hey, you know what, if CNN or you know creditcards.com is linking to Nate's new blog, uh, then that must mean something. It must mean that, you know, they trust Nate. So therefore we Google should trust Nate as well. And so that's like the basics of backlinks. It can get a lot more like into the weeds. We can get very nitty gritty. We could talk about, um, you know, backlinks for an hour here, but 
this is something that you should not overlook. Even in 2024, I've heard like some people say that they're not as you know important today as what they were five years ago. Uh, I really don't agree with that. Okay. Basically, the strategy here for getting backlinks and getting other websites to link to your website is to reach out to uh, a lot of different websites that are reputable and say, hey, you know, maybe I can write some articles for your blog. Um, this is where like collaborations really are helpful, where basically what you can do is um, have these guest uh, posts on other websites. And then in return, uh, they are linking back to your new blog. And so we had some really big breakthroughs when like we partner with some of our affiliates. Let's say like you can partner with um, one of your big affiliates that you're promoting on your website. Let's say it's like Chase or American Express. Now, if you write a guest post on their website, like on the American Express website, and then they link back to your, so like within the article, they link back to your blog. So it's like, you know, Nate is the author on this credit card website. Um, and they link back to your blog. That is what we call a backlink. And that can be super valuable to help basically boost your articles and your blog posts on Google search. So um, I think I'm going to make a separate video on backlinks because it can get pretty confusing, but you can just do some Google searches on that to figure out, you know, exactly like the best backlink strategies in 2024. Let me know if you want to see that video. I can certainly make it for you if there's enough interest out there. A great tool as well is to use something like SEMrush. So I'll leave a link to them down below in the description as well. Um, it's a little bit pricey, but I can guarantee you this is going to be worth it because you can see where other websites are getting backlinks from. You can see uh, kind of their estimated traffic and all kinds of other different things that are very difficult to come by unless you are paying for something like SEMrush. So I'll leave a link to them down below. If you want to really take it seriously, um, then it's something you want to look into. Another factor here, factor number five, is going to be something we call bounce rates or basically like when people click onto your article, right? Because what Google's going to do is they're going to test it out. They might put it higher in search and see if anyone clicks on it. Um, if people click on your article, let's say it's like, you know, best credit cards for students at Penn State University, right? If people click on your article or on your blog post and they, you know, spend three or four seconds on there and then they leave, that tells Google it's not very good. And so you need to make sure that you have low bounce rates and that people stay on your page for a very long period of time. Just like with YouTube, you know, the longer someone watches a video, the higher it ranks in search and the better it does, right? It, it, it kind of sounds like common sense, but it's something that people tend to forget. So in order to kind of limit those bounce rates and to make sure that people stay on your site, something that I think you should be doing is front loading the content. So when someone searches, let's go back to the credit card example, best credit cards, they don't have to scroll for pages and pages to find the actual answer. It's important to have very concise information up front, front loading the content so that they are getting on the page, instantly seeing what they wanted to see and then getting into the article, right? I've seen people where they try to create like these long hooks and they'll make like many paragraphs before they get to the answer. Look, people don't want that these days. Maybe that worked in the past, but people want the answer now. And this also is going to help when you're front loading content to get those Google snippets um, and also to get into things like the new Google AI features uh, when you have those towards the top of the page. Um, so just keep those intros pretty short on your blog articles as well and just get right into the point that's going to help you in 2024 to rank your blogs. The sixth factor here that I wanted to briefly mention here, and this one's going to sound pretty basic, but you need to make sure that your articles are actually easy to read. So I would keep these on basically like a fifth grade level. You know, if you are writing something that is so technical and you're using really big terms, uh, just be careful with that because I've seen writers who, you know, use words that nobody knows some of these big vocabulary words and you're going to lose people. Just like if I was sitting here making a video and I start using, you know, these really big, long, obscure Shakespeare type of words, people would be like, what? I don't understand this. And they would leave the video. Same thing with that applies to blog articles. Make sure that it's easy to read, that anyone, whether it's a fifth grader or, you know, a scientist, that anyone can read it and understand what you are talking about. Okay, so those are some of the most important factors for ranking your articles and your, your blog posts on Google. There's some other things as well that we can go into. If you want to see that, I can make like a two-hour tutorial on SEO for blogs if you want to see it. I just don't know if there's enough demand for it. So if you want to see that, let me know. Leave a comment below in the comments section. Also, don't forget to check out Hostinger. They sponsored a portion of this video. We really love them and it's one of the best platforms for building a website um, and getting set up there. So thanks for watching the video. Hopefully everyone found some value in it and I'll see everybody sometime in a future video.